So let's go ahead and look at exactly what we mean by callback hell. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And let's call this uh, um, callback hell. And we'll put this in a new window. And I'm going to basically start by implementing a round trip from the browser to the web server to fetch an HTML page, a JavaScript page, and some CSS. Um, and then a JavaScript web socket connection from the front end to the back end server. And then a round trip from the browser to the server to the database and back again. And uh, I just created my project in uh, web projects, on um, WebStorm projects. So let's go ahead and in a command shell, I'm going to CD into my um, WebStorm projects. And then I should have a callback hell directory. So let's CD into there. And then this is empty so far. So let's make a new module, npm init, and then package name callback hell, version one, um, an example of callback hell, um, index.js, that's fine. And no test command, no git repository, no keywords, mark, standard license. That's OK. All right. And then we want to go ahead and um, use some stuff. So we're going to npm import. And then we'll, I want to use express as a framework for serving static web content and MSSQL for, um, to connect to the database and um, WS for WebSockets. Um, and that's not quite right. Should have been install. OK, so let's go ahead and start by creating an index.js file. And that's our main entry point for the program. And we're going to um, import express require. And then to use that to serve static content, we're going to say express.use. Um, we're going to want to send um, JSON uh, bodies. Um, actually, we probably don't need this just yet. So let me not do that. I'm going to go ahead and use express.static. And then the path will be dir name plus slash public. So that's going to map to a public folder here. And then we're going to listen for connections. And we'll use 3000 again, port 3000. And then let's go ahead and create some test content here. So this is going to be an HTML file. And we'll call this uh, um, test.html. And just to make sure that we have some, some content. So that should be enough to start. So from callback hell, node index.js. Oh, um, so adders in use, that means I probably have the other server open still, and I do. 
So now let's try it. Okay, and then let's go to a browser and we'll go localhost 3000. Okay, um, cannot get slash. Um, it's actually looking for index.html here by default. Um, so let's go ahead and specify test.html. Okay, so we got test and the title's test, so that's working. Um, so now that we have the express part of this done, let's go ahead and uh, implement a, a more real test. So I'm going to include a script source equals um, test.js. And let's go ahead and include a style sheet as well. And we'll call this test.css. Not sure I actually need CSS for this, so we'll just leave this empty to start with. So this will be test.css and test.javascript. And then in test.javascript, actually, let's go ahead and just make sure it works. So this div box here, I'm going to put an ID on it. So this is my result div box. And I'm going to style result to have a border, one pixel solid black, just to make sure that's working. And then in test.js, let's go ahead and say body onload, call JavaScript init.js or init. And then in test.js, we'll have an init function. And we'll set um, document.get element by ID result dot inner HTML is equal to got here. Okay, so we have our style sheet, the border, and we have our got here is being filled in. So the round trip for express is working. Um, now let's go ahead and implement a round trip for a web socket. And we're going to do that from test.js as well. So um, on the server side, what we want to do is make a connection um, to the um, to the server on a different port. So let's go ahead and say socket is new web socket. And then our URL is ws colon slash slash HTTP. Actually, um, let's go ahead and use a templated string. Back tick there, back quote. And then this is going to be the host name, which is window location host name. And I think that's all we need for our web socket. And then on the client side anyway. So let's go ahead and on the server side, um, which is index.js. Let's go ahead and require WS. And I think this should probably. And then this one is WebSocket server, which is new WebSocket.server. That's actually a class name. And then we're going to go ahead and give it some configuration parameters, but all we really want is the port. And it's 3001. And then we should be able to listen for events now. So wss.on connection. 
And then here's our event handler. It's got the socket and it's got request. And the request is going to hold any form information or socket body or whatever. And that should be like so. So there's a, an arrow function. And then if we got here, let's just go ahead and console.log got connection. And then we'll call wss.close to make the thing go away. All right, so let's go ahead and expose the console. Let's kill our web server and start it up again. And then let's reload. OK, so our WebSocket connection failed. Unexpected response code 302. Oh, um, yeah, the WebSocket should be opening port 3001. So this should be that colon 3001. And I don't think I need to restart the server here. I think that's all on the client side. Yeah, there it goes. So we got our connection and then it closed it. So now let's go ahead and uh, send a request from the server. I'm sorry, from the client to the server. So after we get our socket, we're going to socket.send json.stringify. an object, and then let's do type is search, and keyword is, um, well, for now, for now, I'm just going to hard code this. So let's look for, so I'm going to search for all of the posts in the database that have KDE in them. So that's basically this search right here. Select star from posts where post like. Percent is a wildcard character, percent. And then I'm looking for the string KDE anywhere in the post column. And I've defined the collation order, which is how things are sorted as being case insensitive. So if you look at the table definition, this part right here, this is saying that I'm using Latin one script for this column and it's going to be a case insensitive column. So let's go ahead and send this request over to the server. And then on the server side, We're going to listen for a uh, message. So ws.on message. And then we're going to get a uh, um, blob of data, which we can do something with. So let's just console.log this for now. Make sure it's getting over. And then I'm going to stop the server and rerun it and reload. OK, failed to execute send, still in connecting state. So I actually need to wait until, um, until the connection is done. And that's on the client side. So let's look here. And what I want to do on this side is actually attach an event listener to the socket. So the first thing I need to do is wait for the connection to open. So socket.on open. And then when it's open, I'm going to get um, an event. I don't think I need the event for anything, but it'll be there. But when it's open, I can attach 
a listener um, for a message. Actually, I, I want to add event listener here. If I was using like uh, jQuery, I would have an on property here, but so this is going to go off when I get messages. And then inside the event listener for open, here I can actually execute my send. All right, and then here we're gonna go ahead and let's say console.log event.data. So if I get a response coming back, it'll be in here. So let's go ahead and reload now. Let me go ahead and stop that, restart it, reload. So I got a connection. I didn't get any errors in the console. Um, when I get the message here, I need to display it in the server. So let's go ahead and stop that. I need to get rid of that. I don't want to close that there. Let's go ahead and try it now. Okay, so I sent the data over successfully and I'm not responding to it yet. So let's go ahead and respond to it. So when I get my message, I'm going to send a response. And the response I'm going to send back is going to be an array of records. And then each record is going to be a JavaScript object out of the database. And so it'll be like, uh, let's say type is post and name is, is Bob and post is this matches KDE. So there's a message and it would have a time on there as well from the database, but I'm just dumbing up some data so I can test this. So there's Bob and Carol and Arthur and David. KDE is great. And then KDE can be capitalized because of the case insensitive, case insensitive collation order. And then that's enough. So let's go ahead and close off the array. Okay, let me uh, fix the indentation. So json.stringify ends here. And then send. And then I have an extra one of those. So this one matches ws.on. 
and then that matches this and then that closes ws dot on and then that should be correct so let's go ahead and reindent And then this is curly bracket. I have an extra one of those there. All right, so this all seems to match now. Let me re-indent. Good. So I should get an array coming back here now. So I got the request over here. Did I forget? I forgot to start the server again. Good. So here's my array. And uh, just to demonstrate that it's actually an array coming back. So here's where I got my message. Let's console.log json.parse that. And that should be the round trip. Start that, reload that. Good. So here's my array of JavaScript objects.